Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Growing in Christ with your host, author Noreen Aguirre of Godly Dreams. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you an awesome message that the Lord has given us to share, and it's, the topic is on love. Since this is the week of Valentine's Day, um, we're going to be talking about love and how important it is to to love one another and um, not only your spouse, but to have that um, relationship with God as well. Mm-hmm. Praise God. So today I'm going to have a couple guests joining me. Praise God. And um, I have my husband here, Tino. He's he's joining me today. We're, we're live on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Soar Radio. So thank you so much for joining us and everyone who's coming along um, we have an awesome song that we're going to be singing together. <laughs> this is one of our songs that we we dance to for our wedding. And um, I'm going to have my sister in Christ, Miriam. So you guys want to stay tuned and um, stay tuned because she's going to be sharing also with her husband, Robert. And they're awesome, my brother and sister in Christ. So you don't want to miss their testimony. So thank you guys for joining us. And please enjoy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. For all the times you stood for me, for all the truth that you made me see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all the wrong that you made right, for every dream you made come true, for all the love I found in you, I'll be forever thankful, baby. You're the one who held me up and never let me fall. You're the one who saw me through, through it all. You were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. You lift me up when I couldn't reach. You gave me faith you believe. I'm everything I am because you love me. Oh, baby. You gave me wings and eyes to fly. You touched my hands and I could the sky. I lost my faith. You gave it back to me. You said no star was out of reach. You stood by me and I stood tall. I had your love. I had it all. How grateful for each day you gave me. Baby, I don't know that much, but I know that this is true. I was blessed because I was loved by you. You were my strength when I was sweet. You were my voice when I couldn't see. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. You lift me up when I couldn't reach. You gave me faith to believe. Praise God. I'm everything I am because you love me. Amen. You were always there for me. A tender wind that carried me. A light in the dark shining your love into my life. You've been my inspiration through the lies you are the truth. Praise God. My world's a better place because of you. Praise God. Amen. Yes. For my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. You lift me up when I couldn't reach. Praise God. You made faith because you believe. Praise God. Amen. I'm everything I am 
because you love me. You were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't see. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. You lift me up when you put your me straight back. Baby, save me to believe. I'm everything I am because you loved me. Praise God, amen. I'm everything I am because you loved me. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for all my brothers and sisters for joining us. Today we're talking about the love language. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to have my sister in Christ and her husband joining us as well. Uh, let's see if they're on here. Glory be to God. Let's get them on here. Praise God. So today's message that we're sharing is on love. Since this is the week of Valentine's, we're talking about love and how important it is to not only love your spouses, praise God, but to love God. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we're going to welcome my sister in Christ who's going to be sharing um, her testimony and going over a little bit. We're going to be going over five steps, praise God, five steps to have a relationship, to have a healthy relationship, amen. And um, the first one that we're going to be going over, hi guys! <laughs> hello, how are you? This is my, um, I would like to introduce you, hello, Miriam and Robert, and I'd like to introduce you to my husband, Tino. Hello Praise guys, how are you? God bless. God bless. <laughs> thank you so much for thank you so much. Let me make sure I can hear you. Okay. You can hear me fine, right? Awesome. Yes. Okay, and I would like to give a special shout out to them because tomorrow on Valentine's Day, they're gonna be celebrating seven years of marriage. Hey, Praise, God. Praise God. Praise <laughs> God. Awesome. So congratulations, guys. To seven blessed years. I just pray that the Lord blesses you with many more healthy years to come, physically, mentally, financially, and spiritually for the glory of God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so today we're going to be sharing how important it is to have that foundation, you know, um, to have that relationship with God and to have that relationship with each other. And um, it's not about just when you, when you marry somebody, you're not only giving that commitment to each other, but that you're making that commitment to God as well. So it's very important that we understand exactly what are we doing. And we're going to go over five steps on a healthy relationship. And so the first one I'm going to be going over is um, number one. The first one would be having God in the center of a relationship the center of your marriage, praise God. Amen. And how would you have to, what would you say that, how does that help us in our life, having God? Well, obviously, you know, having God basically, it's, it, it, basically it's the center, it's, it's, it's a foundation. So it's just like a house. If you, if you build the house and a foundation, a strong foundation, I mean, it's, it, it's not gonna fall. And God is, God is amazing. Um, he, he will never let you fall. If you seek him, you will find him. So if you have them in the center, obviously when you have three, just like they said, when you have three strings are much stronger than, than two. So God is definitely, he's an amazing and he would never let you fall. That's how, that's how gracious we have to have a God, the God of gods. Amen. Praise God. And that illustration that he mentioned was because us, uh, one string can easily be broken, right? You can take a string and pull it and pop it. Two together is going to be a little bit hard, but three strings, there's no way. You're going to have to get some scissors or something to cut that thing because there's no way that you can break it with your own strength. So having a relationship with God, that's pretty much the same way. How would you say that that helped you guys in a relationship? Where does that, where does that fall, that category, having God in the center of your life? And that, that's so important because, you know, you heard that saying that there's a thin line between love and hate, you know, 
And not having God at, in the rela- in your relationship, in the center, it, there is a thin line between love and hate. But having God in the relationship is like you can overcome all these things. You can overcome because something that I want to explain and I want to make sure that our viewers know that when you're in a relationship, it's not about giving, you know, what can I get out of that relationship? You know, a lot of times people go into a relationship and like, how can that how can that man help me? You know, what can he do for me? What can he give me? Um, you know, and and vice versa. But when we go into a relationship and we start saying, you know, what can I do for him? How can I help him? How can I help him grow? How can I support him? How can I how can I be his his other half, you know? And um, that's how God created the marriage to work, the relationship to work and 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 serving one another. And when we do that, you know, he's focused on helping me and I'm focused on helping him. And, you know, a lot of times it could be, you know, making a sandwich, you know, you're tired, you're dealing with the kids, you came home from work, you know, and now your husband's like, you know, can you give me a sandwich, you know, and if we don't have God in our relationship, it's going to, we're going to, we could easily fall and be like, you know, what? get up yourself, get up yourself and get it. You know, I'm tired. I just got home from work. You're tired too, whatever the case is, but God helps you go beyond he helps you do beyond your own strength, your own ability, things that you cannot do. You you have to die to yourself and constantly give that servant heart and and you do it with joy. You'd be like, you know, okay, I'm going to go and, you know, because I know because loving my husband, I'm loving God. Serving my husband, I'm serving God. Serving my children, I'm serving God. Praise God. And so the next one I'm going to go over is love. Praise God. Love is so important. Um, to have a relationship without love is, is just really impossible. And that's why it's so important, not only in, you know, people on a daily day basis, you know, saying that they, they love God, you know, but they don't have that relationship for him. They don't have that love for him. They're constantly living out their lives and doing whatever, you know, they do on a daily basis. Um, but they're not taking the time to have that intimate relationship with each other. And to show each other how much that they love each other and and the little things. Maybe like making a you know a bubble bath when you come home from work. <laughs> Maybe a massage, you know, a foot rub. You know, keeping keeping the marriage going and, and always constantly serving one another. And that should be the, the drive. And always not to have that mindset, right? I mean, there was something that when we first got married, I remember um, he would go out the door and he was always like, I love you, I love you. And he still does. Um, but when he would forget, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he didn't say he loved me. <laughs> and and I would call him like, you know, you went out the door. You didn't even say you love me. How rude is that? And he's like, oh, you know, I love you. You know, I love you. So not going into that habit and saying, OK, they know I love them. Do we really have to say it? And so saying it, though, not only saying it, but saying it with actions. Praise God. And I don't know if there's something that you guys want to share on that that topic, how important it is to share your love for each other with actions. Um, about love, I mean, you, you got to learn how to be selfless and, and, um, and think about the other person, even though sometimes, you know, like you were saying, you come out of work tired and you really don't want to do something when you get home. All you want to do is sit down, relax. And, you know, lift your feet up. And sometimes, uh, you know, you got to be able to be given and, and, and just, uh, uh, you know, to make the extra stuff. And, you know, and, and say, here, honey, or, you know, and, and do this. And, oh, don't worry about it. I'm putting the kids to sleep. Or, or let me get the bags uh, from the grocery store. You know, little things like that. And yeah. it's so much easier, too, when it's, I mean, we've had times where it was just one, vice versa. He would, we would go through seasons before where it was just him doing the effort. And then it was seasons where it was just me doing the effort. And then when we came together doing it, it was just so much easier. There was just so much peace. So when you both put the effort, you find it so much easier, you know, because you're both doing it together as a team. Amen. That's beautiful. Yeah. The burden's not all on one. Right, right. The burden's not all on one person. So that's so important, you know. And that's a lot of times, you know, even with the, the church itself, you know, when the church is trying to just 
do everything on their own strength, you know, and that's how we have to operate is learning to come together, to work together. And I would like to say that this is something very beautiful because Miriam and her husband, you know, they don't come to our church, you know, they're not, we're not, we don't go to their church, but it's not about the church building, praise God. It's about that we are the church and we are working together as one body, amen? And um, that's something that, that's very important. And it's not just putting the burden on one person, but, but coming together and doing our part as a whole body, you know, doing our part in, in a relationship that's so important, just not, not letting the other person take the whole burden and say, you know, or even like my, for myself that right now I'm a stay home mom, um, you know, he could easily say, you know, I just came home from work. You've been home all day. I mean, those times that I'm sure that he thought that in the beginning <laughs> until he had his times off and he was home with us and be like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is, this is more work than actually going to work, you know, like, you know, this is, you're really not resting. You're not, you know, you're constantly on the move. You're constantly working all day long. Especially with the kids. I mean, God bless for, for, um, for moms out there, you know, with that patience that, that God gave them for that, um. <laughs> You know, I don't have much patience. I give God, every day I pray to God to give me more patience. But, you know, I love my wife and, and what she does every day. I mean, just staying at home, it's like, okay, I got to take care of the kids and make sure, you know, clean the house constantly because they're always, you know, you clean one room and they're on the other room. I'm like, man, this is like 24-7. At least at work, I get a break. You know, so, you know, just, just like when, when God died on that cross, it was because of love for us. So that love, that that love is what makes us what, what people see in us. Through that love, that's the love. That's that's what we we God uses us to to share His word. Because mm -hmm. without love, then what do you have? You have nothing. You can't, you know, you can't forgive without love. You you can't, um, you know, you have you can't function basically. You know, to to move on forward to because I know the hardest thing of of is forgiveness, right? But when you have that love, that unconditional love. Man, that's that, that's what transforms and changes the world, basically. Amen. Praise God. And John, um, I'd like to share with you, John 4, 19 says, We love because he loves us first. So that's the reason why we can love, because God loved us first. Um, he's chosen us. He's chosen us. He showed us what was the ultimate love, the price that he's given us. You know, he, he gave us his son. You know, he came down in the flesh and he... He gave us his son to pay that ultimate price. And so, so that, that's like unconditional love. That's the agape love that we, as children of God, when we start living for him, we start learning how to love the way Jesus loved. Amen. Praise God. The third one I would like to talk about is trust. You know, in a relationship, you need trust. It's so important. When when there's no trust, there's tr without trust, it brings chaos into a relationship. You're not trusting the other person. And so that's something that if a relationship is, is dealing with no trust right now, put that in prayer. Pray for that because you can't have a healthy relationship without these things. You know, you have to constantly seek God and, and put it in prayer because the Bible verse I want to share with you is Proverbs 3, 5, 6. That says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So it's so important that we that we trust in God with everything, with our relationship, with our children, with our finances, that we're constantly trusting in Him. And that same way, God wants us to have that relationship with each other, to trust each other, to be free to tell each other anything, any any of our concerns. Um, you guys might may experience being married for seven years too. That there, there may be times that you were probably afraid to say something like, "Oh my God, He's going to be mad at me." But regardless, you share, you share and you trust that you know that his love for you is sincere, you know, and that you're going to get past anything that comes your way. I don't know if there's something that you want to share on behalf of trust and how it impacts your life and how it manifests in your own marriage. Praise God. I can definitely testify to how God took me from there because I struggled with trust. Um, from my testimony with men, you know, being abused in my past, coming into a relationship, thinking I was okay because I'm in Christ, you know, um, I, I realized there were some triggers that was stopping me from fully trusting in him. And uh, 
I remember there was a time when I was praying, and um, you know, I just have to be honest. And I'm like, you know, Lord, can you just work on him? <laughs> <laughs> So now you don't deal with that, right? <laughs> he taught you. He taught you how to how to trust. Praise God, Amen. So the next one we're gonna go over is respect. It's so important that we respect each other, that we respect each other in our relationship, and um, we, you know, because the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us to respect each other, and not go beyond, and be going over our authority and. A lot of times people don't understand that in a relationship, God has, God's definitely, he's made everything in order, praise God. And God, Jesus, the husband, the wife, the children, and he has given us that order for a reason. And um, we, we must always respect each other. He says, you know, husbands, love your wife as, you know, I love the church as you would love the church. And so he has given us that order to go by and to respect each other. And it's not to say that, you know, I can't do anything and, you know, the woman can't do anything or the man can't, you know, but always caring for their needs, caring for the way, you know, they feel, you know, they're just what they want or even their goals. Um, I would like to throw something out there. Let's say, you know, my husband wants to go somewhere or a vision that he may have or something that he may want to do or a vacation he wants to go to. Instead of saying, you know, okay, we don't have the money. We're not going there. It's not going to happen. You know, just automatically shutting down his goals, his dreams, his desires. You know, we should respect each other, respect each other's their, their thoughts. You know, so it's not only respect each other in a way that you're not talking back. But it's also the way that they feel, the concerns that they're sharing with, you know, the sometimes we share, you know, visions, the ideas, whatever it is, but respecting that, respecting that and saying, you know what, I understand, you know, that you want to go on vacation, let's, let's save up for it, let's save for, up for it, and God willing, you know, that would happen, that would come to pass, so um, it's so important that we respect our, our uh, feelings, our feelings, um, each other. Anything you want to say on that? No, I'm mean, just the fact that you know, you, especially when you know your 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 wife. Um, as you guys know, you guys have been with each other for seven years, and after a while, you get to know their tendencies and and how how they're feeling. Not even if she's saying anything, or just the way she she looks at you when you come home. You know, <laughs> you just you're there for them. You know, you're you're there. Because you love them and you want to hear, you know, even sometimes you're tired, but there's times when you got to say, you know what, you know, I'm here for you, babe. You know, there's, you know, there's nothing that we can't do to, to move on forward and we give it both. Because imagine two two of you praying together, telling God, this is what we need, this is what we want. And, and when, like it says, when two or more are gathered, he's there. 
So that's just power, power right there in his words. And, and you move on together, forward, you know, not back. Just keep moving forward. And whatever happens in the past, well, let's it happen. And you guys got to figure out both with God to, to keep on moving forward. Amen. Praise God. Is there anything you guys would like to share and respect how important it is? Definitely, uh, I, I got to work with each and every day. I got to die to myself on that, my brother, because definitely being a man and, and and we're not perfect. You know, we know God is there, but there's times that we worry even for the littlest things. And and thank God for our wives that we could talk to them and and, and tell them, you know, what we feel. And, and like I said, we got to move forward. But definitely that's something that we have embedded in us because of our, you know, we want to take care of our family. You know, that's what comes to our mind first each and every day but knowing that God is there it's fulfilling amen praise God amen so the next one I want to talk about is communication and how important it is communication a lot of times marriages are destroyed because of lack of communication um, they or a woman I know a lot of women because I you know just talking to people I know that you know they would tell me things and they're like you know well you know, he doesn't want to do anything around the house. You know, he doesn't want to help me with the kids or he doesn't want to help me do anything. You know, I'm working, he's working and, you know, it's like everything's on me. I have to be picking up the kids. I have to be doing everything and I have no help whatsoever. And then I say, well, have you asked him? I mean, and she's, they're like, yeah, I mean, he would do it if I ask him. You know, if I tell him something, he'll do it. But, you know, on his own, he wouldn't do it. A lot of times I do find that with men that, um, not all men, probably, but I do hearing, you know, because, um, you know, I tell my husband, you know, they're constantly calling me for counseling. <laughs> Praise God. And um, so I do find that a lot of times they they feel that, you know, I see that men, a lot of men, they don't do anything unless they're told, you know, you know, can you help me cook or can you throw out the garbage or can you, um, you know, help me with the kids or feed the kids or whatever. So a lot of, for a lot of men that, you know, they, they do fall in that category that they do stuff like that. But and then a lot of women, they fall in the category that they don't explain or they don't even share. They just, they start getting mad and they start having all this emotions build up, you know, and then it keep, it pulls them. It brings a division between each other because there's like, say, I can't believe, you know, he doesn't love me because he doesn't help. You know, here I am having to wash the dishes. Or here I am, you know, I just had to cook. I cooked everything. I cleaned. Everybody ate. And everybody goes their own way and leaves all the dishes there. Whatever the case is, you know. And then here the wife is all mad washing dishes and putting the dishes away or whatever. And so there's no communication there. Or they get mad that they, they have to tell the other person. They feel that the other person doesn't love them because they're not going out of their way to do these things or to even offer to help. So, um... 
I see people even struggling and even saying, you know what, I can't deal it with it anymore. You know, I want to get a divorce. I don't want to be with this person anymore. Um, you know, there's there's no way. And a lot of a lot of times people go through divorces and they the other spouse is like, I have no idea. I don't know why she broke up with me. Everything was fine. All of a sudden she just got mad and she left. I have no idea. So communication is so important in a relationship. Don't assume that the other person knows. Don't assume that the other person knows how you're feeling, how you woke up, what are you experiencing, whatever it is. Communicate with your spouse, letting them know, say, you know what, I'm not having a good day today. You know, I'm not having a good day today. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Whatever it is, you know, that, that's your other half. That's your, that's, you guys, when you get married, the Bible says you become one. You're no longer two, but you're one, one flesh. Praise God. So we have to let the other person, the body know. It's kind of like, you know, our, our, you know, when our, when we stub our toe, you know, <laughs> we need our hand to help, you know, to rub our feet. Praise God. So that's how it is with, in a relationship, we have to communicate with each other and constantly letting each other know. And if there's something that's bothering us, you know, take care of it, deal with it. Something that your mom always told us, told you when you got married, what was it? Uh, yeah, when we first, she, the only one thing she told me and God bless for my mom, she, she doesn't get, she says, when you're married, that's, that's on you. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get into your relationship. I mean, you guys got married and you guys got to deal with it you know that's one thing i respect about my mom but the first, only thing she told me and, and, and as advice she's like i don't care how angry or you know how mad you are at your wife at the end of the day you squash it and you sleep in the same bed and i'm like what is she talking about she said because if you don't sleep in the same bed that devil's right next to your wife talking like 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 it's gonna get even worse and worse and worse so you know try <laughs> always Sleep in the same bed. I go, okay, I took that advice and I've been taking that <laughs> advice till now. And it, it's helped a lot because what happens, what his mom was telling him, what happens in that situation is like, let's say we get into an argument or because of communication, he didn't help out or something. And I'm mad and I come to bed and I'm like, you know, without even telling him, he probably doesn't even know. But I'm mad and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe how inconsiderate he is. I can't believe how, how, whatever it is. So what she said that the devil's with your wife sleeping in the bed means that all these thoughts start coming to your mind. All this frustration and all this, oh my God, you know, I don't deserve this and I shouldn't be with this. And I need to be with somebody that's more caring. I can't believe he's out there watching TV and not even caring that I'm in here crying or whatever the case is. So make sure in a relationship that his mom gave him, which was awesome advice, was that Anything that you go through in any type of relationship, any argument, make sure that the communication's there, you know, that you talk to each other because something that, you know, sometimes we're mad at them or they're mad at us and we have no idea why they're mad. And what we're thinking, like we didn't even say anything or, you know, or they didn't even do anything. So it's always important to say when somebody's, when they hurt you, let them know, say, you know what, I thought that was a little bit of rude of you. You know, it hurt me for you to speak that way. Or I felt maybe disrespected. Maybe you didn't mean to say it that way, but I felt hurt by it. So that's what it means to squash it and not to let the enemy continue, you know. And then having him hear his feedback, you know, say, oh, my God, I had no idea. That wasn't my intentions, you know. So a lot of times people go through a divorce because there's lack of communication. You know, the communication is not there. And so that is so important in a relationship to communicate and never to go to bed angry. No matter what the situation is, you squash it, squash it there and and don't allow the devil to throw in those, those lies that he loves to throw in. So I don't know if you want to share anything on behalf of communication, how important it is. In your relationship. I have... There's been times where I would get upset and I wouldn't say anything because as a wife, you're married together, you, you know, you live with one another and, um, you know, there's been times where I just expected him to know without me saying anything. You should know because, <laughs> hello, I'm your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and, and it's. <laughs> and it's so sad to see that people actually go through a divorce because of this because they let it keep building up and and like i said the man is like i have no clue i have no idea i don't know why she left me i don't know why she was mad you know so if if we were just communicate you know communicate is such an important key in our relationship i mean that's so important and and that's having the body work as one you know Communicate, constantly being on the same page. Communication is so important. So these five steps are going to help each and every person out there and to, to continue, to continue with them in our relationship. The first one, having God in the center of your relationship. The second one, love, constantly giving to each other, giving to that other person. How can you please that other person even when you're tired constantly, that service heart? You know, trusting that person, praise God putting your trust in him. And if you feel any any of these things or you're lacking, put it in prayer. Respect, always respecting that person, not only by the words you say, but um, how you treat, not only by how you treat them, but by the words you say, praise God. And by their feelings, respect their feelings, respect their dreams, respect the, their desires, respect, you know, their visions, the things that they, that that's important to them. You know, you don't you don't just trash it because it's not important to you and it's not your goal and it's not your dream. But you you respect it because it's something that's important to them. Praise God. And the last one was communication. It's so important to always be as to be to have a healthy body and a healthy relationship, communication. But with God, all these fall in order. He starts giving us the wisdom, you know, to 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 love unconditionally. He gives us, you know. That, that motherly trust, you know, to constantly trust, to respect, and to communicate. So I thank you guys so much for joining us. I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to say before we're done with today's broadcast. I think it's uh, really important also that uh, in, a, in a relationship, it's also um, important to have grace. I mean, you have so many things that you go on through a, during a day that you expect the other person to know and and sometimes the other person doesn't know or you know you grow up in a, in a, in a different environment from each other and some things the things that are normal to you are, are not going to be normal to the other person so mm-hmm. you know you set to do things out of, out, of, out of the norm and sometimes you you know you expect the other person to know because that's the way you grew up mm-hmm. and that's the way you, your mind your mind works but that's not the reality of things. So, uh, you know, have, having grace and, and being able to be forgiven to, uh, to you know, things that sometimes are uh, little things is, is really important. I mean, that, that that has helped me a lot to be able to have, have grace towards sometimes the things that, that my wife does. And, and, you know, and I'm pretty sure that she does the same thing in return that, you know, we didn't grow up in the same way, so... Right. There's gonna be a lot of things that I do mm-hmm. that that she has no clue that as to why I'm doing it or to why I'm acting the way I'm acting. So you know, it's a really important. I mean, in my opinion, that to have grace in a yes. relationship, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's at work or with your kids or with your marriage. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's an old amount of importance. I mean, God has grace towards us, and we commit sins every day. So grace you know, we have, you gotta have the same mindset. We gotta be as much as Christ as we can be. Amen. Amen. I, I, if I can add to that, I believe where he's saying it's very important and it's an, also an example as, you know, the body in Christ, having that towards one another. You know, we've got to learn to agree to not agree or disagree. How Amen. do you say that? Agree. Uh, agree to not agree, I guess. Where you say? someone can be wrong, you may not agree with what they're saying, but, um, it's not about bashing them, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's about, okay, that's your opinion, you're entitled to that, and move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I have to say about that as far as having Praise grace God. and just loving on them yeah. and, um, and, and working together. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes, it's so important to, it's a agree to disagree. Praise God. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very important to, to do that. Another thing I want to say before we close out that um, 
we must have this relationship again with God. I, that's something that I want to reinforce. It's so important in order to have this love, in order to love each other the way that God has created us to love. We have to first have a relationship with God. Like um, John 4, 19 says, we love because he loved us first. And because we loved, because he loved us first, we give our life to him and he teaches us to love that agape love, to love unconditionally, to trust, to serve, praise God. And so it's very important. And I just want all the listeners out there and um, I would like for you guys to pray along with us. For every single person out there that's tuning in, that if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the number one thing. You want a healthy relationship, you have to submit to God. Submit to God so that He can lead you the right way, so He can guide you, give you the wisdom, the discernment on what to do, what not to do, when to stay quiet, when to submit. Praise God. So it's very important to have that relationship with God. So if there's anyone that's listening who hasn't received Jesus, who hasn't confessed with their mouth, like Roman 10, 10 says, you know, confess with your mouth and receive your and you receive with your with your heart. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord of your life, you are saved. So it's a decision that you have to make and you have to confess and you have to believe. So I'm just gonna pray right now, and I would like for you guys to just pray along with me. For anyone who's getting ready to make that decision. Father God, it's a privilege and an honor to be called your son or your daughter. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the life you have given me. I come before you, Father God, and I repent of my sins, Father God. I repent for anything bad I said or done or even thought of, Heavenly Father. Father God, I ask, Lord, for you to come into my heart and make it your home. I believe in you. I believe that you paid the ultimate price to wash away my sins. Father God, help me live the life that's pleasing and honoring to you to do all that you have called me to do. Give me the desires to read your word. Give me the desires and the hunger to seek you, Father God, and to be in your presence. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in me. And I thank you, Father God, for all that I have and all that you've done. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 I would just like to pray if you can join me in prayer for, for their marriage. And I would like for you guys to pray for ours, because March uh, 28th, we will be 16 years. I had to think, because my daughter's birthday, too, is a fault. It, it gets, I get confused with the, my daughter's birthday. But we'll be 16 years married this year, praise <laughs> God. So it's, it's been truly a blessing, and the Lord has, has blessed me in so many ways with this wonderful man of God. And... Um, I would like for you guys to pray for my marriage. I'm going to pray for your marriage. And then we're going to close and pray for every single couple out there together. Praise God. So, Father God, this is we're going to pray for Robert and Miriam. Father God, we just pray, Father God, right now, Father God. Father God, we pray for Robert and Miriam, Father God, that you bless their marriage, Father God. Father God, that it goes beyond, Father God. I pray for your favor, for your glory to fall on the relationship, Father God. Father God, I pray that those three uh, strings can never be broken, Father God. I pray that you protect them, that you protect their family, Father God, that you protect the decisions that they're making, Father God, the vision, the dreams, the ideas that you are planting in their head, Father God, that you will bring to pass. Father God, for the next move that they're making, Father God, for the move that they're making this year, Father God, I pray that you find the right place where they need to be, that they're going to be able to open their home to minister, Father God, to do all that you have called them to do, Father God. I pray that you bring those visions, those dreams to pass for your glory, Father God. I pray that you provide, Father God, everything that they need according to your riches and glory, Father God. Father God, I pray for their family, Father God. I pray that no weapons formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for blessings on their children up to the fourth generation, Father God, that their children will rise up and be men and women of God, Father God, to do all that you have called them to do, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you just guide the people that need to be in their life, Father God, that's going to help them with this vision, the dreams that you have given them, the desire, Father God. 
guide the right people their way to help them, Father God, financially, Father God, to help them with the wisdom, the, the resources that they need, Father God. Father God, I know that you are going to provide. I know that you are going to bless them. And I know that they're going to go forth to reach out to the multitude for your yes, glory, Lord Father Jesus. God. Father God, they have a servant heart, Father God. You are leading them and they're, they're being faithful and doing what you have called them to do. I pray for blessings on their ministry. I pray for blessings on their marriage, Father God, on their family and everything that they put their hand to, that it prospers in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray for this wonderful couple that you have uh, placed in our lives, Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you for their testimony that can inspire us to continue growing, Father. I bless them, Father God. I bless their family, Father God. And as they continue loving one another, and as they continue seeking you, putting you first um, before everything else, Father God, that their children will look up to them and want to be just like them, Father mm-hmm. God, that they can be able to have healthy marriages as well, Lord, Father God, and their grandchildren, and so on and so forth, Father God, from generation to generation, Father God. God. (laughs) Father, I thank you. I bless them, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that in their neighborhoods, that you would use them for your glory, Father God, so they can be able to be an example of a healthy home, Father God, that their neighbors can look to them and say, what is it that they carry, Father God? For it is you, Father God. Let their lifestyles be a living Mm. testimony, Father God, Mm. of your love, your grace, your mercy, Father God. I pray, Father God, you would bless them with the uh, uh, dreams that they desire. Mm. Bless them with their desires, Father God, that you have placed into their hearts, Father God. I pray, Father God, You would show them confirmation of confirmation of what you're going to do. I pray, Father God, you would open up um, their eyes to see more of your glory, Father God. I pray, Father God, for an increase of of your visitation, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would use their children, Father God, for your glory, for your kingdom, Father God. Use them in a mighty way, Father God. I pray for... uh, a financial increase to be able to provide for everything that they um, are praying for or seeking out Amen. for, Father God, as their ministry increases, Father God. Praise God. I pray you would send them in the right direction of the right people, Father God. Continue to, to, to bless them with divine connections, oh Father God. I pray, Praise Father God. God, that many people will be able to be blessed by this ministry by her book and books to come, Father God. I pray, Father God, that many men would look up to her husband as an example of a head of a household and how he needs to be to provide, Father God, from from uh, the for the entire household to love, to self, to uh, to be a man who dies to self each and every day, Father God. Let them uh, um, live their lives according to your word and and show by. Um, how we need to be. Let them walk as Jesus walked, Father God. Hallelujah. I bless them, Lord, Father God. I bless them from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father God. I pray, Father God, any attacks that the enemy has tried to throw at them for so many years, Father God, I just cancel every single attack right now in Jesus' name. Bless them. Hallelujah. Bless them, Father God. Bless them this year, Father God. Increase, Father God, to reach the new level, the new heights, Father God, mm-hmm. that they have yet to be, Father God. Hallelujah. I thank you for this broadcast, and I just bless each and every person watching. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Praise amen. God. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we'd like to just pray real quick for each and every person out there who took the time to tune in. We just pray for your life. We pray that you have a healthy life with God first. God first and more, most foremost, that you have a healthy uh, relationship with him. And that every relationship after that is overflowing with joy, peace, love, happiness, patience, um, that agape love that only God can bring. I pray for blessings on your life, your relationships, um, your children, your family. I pray that the Lord's love surpasses all understanding and, and that he keep continues um, just showing you how much he cares. You know, God is there. We, you know, the, the only, the, sometimes we don't, we don't feel that love because we're not connected, but God is there. He's waiting for you with an open heart. 
Nobody can love you the way that God loves you. So run to God. Run to God and um, lean on Him and continue trusting in Him. And I just pray for each and every one of you guys that you have a blessed, blessed day. I pray for blessings on you. I pray for blessings on your relationships, your relationship to come if you're not married yet. And um, if you're with somebody, I pray that um, you make that um, commitment to get married because it's so important to have God in the relationship of your marriage, in the middle of your relationship, praise God. And not to not to be living with with you know one another without having God. So this year, make it make it a year, make it a commitment to to seek God, to put God in the middle of your life, in the middle of your relationship. Because with God in the middle of your relationship is that three strings. Without God, that rope can be broken. That rope can be broken any time. But with God in the middle of your life, making that commitment is not only making that commitment with each other, but it's bringing that commitment to God and saying, Lord, I commit to this relationship. I ask that you bless it, that you protect it, that you lead us, that you guide us. And, and you know, commit, you know, to, you know, having him in the middle of that commitment is such a blessing. So any relationship that's out there that is hasn't made that decision, I just pray that you make that decision because it's so important to have God in the middle of your relationship. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. I love you guys, my brother and sister in Christ. Um, Till next time, thank you guys so much. Please share this video. And um, Miriam, she also has a YouTube channel. So you guys want to go to her channel, follow along. She also shares... Uh, prophetic dreams, messages that the Lord has given her. Glory be to God. We are out, We are here to reach out to as many lives for the glory of God. Not letting anything get on, in the way. It's not about what I'm doing. It's not about what you're doing. It's about what we are doing for the glory of God. Praise God. So it was a pleasure of having you, my brother Robert. And um, I pray that the Lord continues using you because you and my husband, we need a lot of men to go out there and to stand up, to stand up on their faith and what they believe in and to be that role model. Because there's a lot of men out there who are lost in this world. And and to see you guys to come on here and to share is such a beautiful thing. And, and how God designed the church to be, which is is the man to, to stand up in his household and really, really lead his family for God and for Christ. So I thank you guys for being that awesome role model and sharing this time with my husband and I. It's truly been a blessing. Until next time, thank you guys. Have a blessed, blessed day. Love you guys. Take care. God bless. God bless you. Bye-bye. Take care. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to leave you guys with John 8, 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set, set you free. free. Praise God. Thank you guys. Have a blessed, blessed Valentine's Day for those who celebrate Valentine's Day. But I'm all about love. Love is not just one day uh, a year. It's, it's every day. 24-7, right? 24-7. <laughs> so if you guys missed the song... 365 days out of the, of the year. <laughs> if you guys missed the song that my husband and I did, um, go to the beginning of it and look at the song. That's a song that we did. We're going to come back on here on our anniversary and do another song together. <laughs> Lord willing. Praise God. So thank you guys. Have a blessed night. Take care. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. Bye-bye.